one type by you don't understand people's mother they will still bring their children right away as at this time where was Nika Deboe? Nika Deboe was in command in Ibadan he was in the hostel command in those days for example in Abekuta when I was growing up command and Alaba Lonsing was the only private school in the entire Abekuta private school in Luang Bain. of prophets out there. And so you'll be hearing all manners of prophecies in the coming days. All manners. Now I'm talking to you, my children. No criticizing anybody. Just I have my duty to make sure I teach my children, my own children. When God speaks, He speaks specifically. There is no maybe or perhaps. I know Kumula. He speaks. So if you hear somebody prophesying and says it is likely one of the following people uh, will succeed, that's not a prophecy, that's personal opinion. When God speaks, he will say, this fellow will succeed. That fellow is not going to make it. That is the way God speaks. He doesn't say, he's likely. Yeah, I will check. He didn't say, say, say it to the righteous. It is likely to be well with him. No, say it to the righteous. It shall be well. There's somebody. And when God speaks, some of the things He says will may baffle your brain a little. And I'll give you an example. I've always told you I'm not a prophet, I'm just a pastor. But I hear from God once in a while. Years ago, there were three people contesting to be president of Nigeria. Hi. Abiola uh, Amin Okano and uh, one third fellow. What is your name now? Sofa. Something like that. Sofa, I think so. At that time, I was president of Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria. And so the other Pentecostal people asked me, Sir, what do we do? Who do we vote for? Hello, hello. Three of them, all three Muslims. Are you doing? Who's going to win, sir? I said none. Uh -uh. How can that be? <laughs> if you toss a coin, when it lands, it's either head or tail. I said no. He said, why? Because God told me, you spoke in a parable. 
Or I'm going to pay it's okay, man. The loser, the loser will be the winner. And the luckiest of them is Amino Kano. Uh -huh. How do we... Amino Kano died before the election. Abiola won, but he never got to the throne. And the fellow who lost, at least he didn't have the embarrassment of winning and not winning. The winner is the loser, the loser is the winner, the luckiest of them is the one who died. Good afternoon, good afternoon. <laughs> My colleagues came to me and said, well, well, it's a Oh, okay, I got you. Life. I got you, Emilio. For example, if somebody asked me today, like many people are already doing, that he was going to be our next president, the answer is, I don't know. How can you say you don't know? That, uh, I mean, your daddy's son, he hasn't told me yet. You don't do guesswork when it comes to prophecy. Okay? So it doesn't matter how you are feeling right now. As far as you are concerned, your siege is over. All right, I'm doing good. Good, good, good afternoon. Good prophecy. afternoon. Good afternoon. No, good afternoon. Good more. afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. I had that one directly from that D. I had that one. Directly. Good afternoon, everyone. How you doing? How you doing? Well, hmm. <clears throat> How's everyone doing? Good afternoon, good afternoon. Very quick, let me just touch base on this. Only Father Victor Alabusini. Uh yeah. How is everyone doing? Good afternoon. Please, as you are joining, be nice. Just click the share button. Click the share button. I'm trying to wait so that, you know, our people can be part of it. Son and senior personal assistant of the general overseer of the redeemed Christian Church of God. Welcome, RCCG. please share. Pastor Enoch Adeboye acclaimed a pastor for delivering a sermon in his parish on Sunday, April 3rd, mm. after his father's sermon. Let it create the unnamed pastor's decision. Welcome, let's please share. Let's share. share. Calling in a coach. Well, after his, share, share, every share. first Sunday of the month is tax Thanksgiving Sunday in the church, and all pastors are expected to connect their parishes to the national headquarters, where Adeboye, fondly called Daddy Gio, delivers a sermon. No other sermon is expected Good afternoon. to come after Adebayo will have been also, welcome. he did not mention a name. Please Let share. Let noted in his post, that the pastor is not a son of the general overseer, given his action, adding that he should rather take over the geo's duties fully by doing the altar call. Oh, yes, welcome. Thanks for joining us. So, Daddy and Mommy were appointed as general overseer, and then by implication, I don't know, yes, yes, you were yes. also appointed as the special okay. assistant the general one officer, level. which, you know, is an office that's worthy of importance. What is your greatest lesson in office, especially for students who might think that, you know, as Pastor Darius said, he said they were going to be involved, you all decided you are going to be involved. Serve them, Zubu, that's a way. Just for their purpose. How is everyone doing what anyway? Is your, what's your greatest <laughs> lesson that you could share? Um, well, it wasn't automatic. Uh, I did study aerospace engineering. Um, 
with project management and did masters in project management as well. Okay. Um, I I just couldn't sleep after a while. There was this thing that just kept bugging me that I needed to come and work. I wanted to listen to this. Um, they didn't have personal assistance back then, so the best way to describe the role is as a messenger. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So, you know, I came, I did an interview uh, for eight hours. You did an interview? Came, yeah, serious interview. Um, I've never been grilled so hard in my life before. I came in fully suited with uh, with a long tie, not even a bow tie. <laughs> I came out with singlet and boxers uh, by the time they were done with me. Um, and uh, normally everybody gets a six month uh, probation. Mine was a year and six months just so that they can at least still fire me as i knew how important the mission took the general of us here um you know I'm, I'm grateful to god for because today I, i'm i'm actually learning a lot from what my my firstborn said uh our firstborn you know the last wise man and uh my sister the you know the united nation of the house and of course pastor d um you know, I'm learning from them the parts that I didn't get to see or experience. Mm. Even though I've been in the camp since I was six months old, um, wow. I stand to be corrected. So um, I, I didn't get to know what was happening in the elements. But working as a personal assistant, you, I see that Baba, as a, as a woman, book woman, 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 woman for such a great man of God, and then have the understanding that you you need to be able to you know, the, your father, from, you know, the, the, the boss that he is, and you know, you know, that goes along with that hey, assignment, you know, for, for, you know, for, you know, for granted, you know, for, you know, for granted. Mm -hmm. because um, many people, especially in this mission, um, are qualified, especially in this mission, are qualified, until I came in, I just uh, God helped me to push that. Um, now it's grown. I mean, I'm in 190 something nations. So the next personal assistant to the next general overseer should be able to at least speak uh, Dutch, French, Spanish, a bit of able Russian. To yeah, be able to. Yeah, work. okay. So let's hit it from the head straight. No time. So, good afternoon, everyone. How are you guys doing? And I hope you guys are having a very good weekend. Um, this is going to be a pretty quick one. Um, for me, those that have you know, that have known me for a while and that know what I stand to represent, you know that above all shenanigans and socializations and fun fair, uh, I'm a person of faith. Uh, I'm a person of faith and I don't take that for granted. Um, everybody have their roots. Some people, their roots is their village and all of those things. I'm not even culturally raised. I wasn't raised anywhere close to my village. I don't speak my language. I speak, I'm more of a Yoruba person than anything, but I'm not a Yoruba person by, you know, genetics. My root is church. You know? That's my root. Uh, so, and I don't take that for granted. I take it very seriously. You, Anybody who knows me by now knows that I take serious offense when I see people come after men of God. Not because I idolize pastor, but because I feel like church is a voluntary organization. I'm from Edo State. I'm from out in Edo State. But I was born and raised in Lagos, so. Um, you know, I take offense when people come from men of God. Not because I idolize pastors. There is only one person that can be wrong to me in my entire life, and that is God. After God, you do anyhow, you see anyhow. You do no man, you do no man. You all know me, I all know you. I don't, I don't kiss asses. I keep it hundred. But I take offense when people come for pastors, simply because I feel like church is a voluntary organization. I've been to a couple of churches in my life where I don't like the pastor's conduct, but I didn't come for them. 
I just walk the hell away. You know? I just walk away. I feel like church, if, if it, you are going to a church and they are asking you for money and you don't want to give it, just don't give it. Most people donate money and give money that they don't even have in church because they want to show off. You are not obligated. If the pastor is preaching, you don't like the, the sermon, don't go there again. If they are asking you to contribute money and you don't want to do it, don't give it. Or if they stress you too much, go to another church. There are gazillion churches in Nigeria and all across the world. So it's, it's, it's a new setting idea to me. Extremely new setting idea to me for somebody to start attacking pastors and call them scam and do this. Number two reasons why I get irritated when people come for pastors is that I don't know how any other person see it, but as far as I'm concerned, pastors are human beings. And for me as a person, I don't see them differently from that. Now, what that means is that anybody can mess up any time. They are just people like a doctor chose to go to school and study medicine and begin to practice as a doctor. An engineer go to school and study, giving his five, six years to study engineering and becomes an engineer. Pastors are just people who have given their own life and time to study the Bible and the knowledge of God and they are teaching it and discipling people. So they are not VVIP before God. As a matter of fact, we are equal before God. We are very equal before God. There is no VVIP born again and then low class born again. You understand? So, but you see those things, you can't take it away. I'm saying this, this because I'm about to say some things that looks very differently from what I stand to represent. And I'm going to keep it 100. But I have a sense of responsibility. And of course, you all know how much I've went hard on a couple of people. I've really went out, I've spent over a whole year back to back confronting people like Maureen by the job. I mean, Maureen is a nuisance. Personally, I think she's a nuisance. I think that um, she's the least person that should say shit about pastors because she wants to be mommy deal too. No. So if everything work out for her, she will have as well be one of the four one nights that she's attacking. So she should shut up. You're sleeping with a pastor that you know is married and it didn't work out for you. You registered a church in UK. It didn't work out for you. So shut the hell up. And she have a messed up life. She should not say anything. Number two reason why I get irritated is that I noticed that most people who have chosen it as a career to attack pastors are people who have used their greed to be aiming at something and life did not work out for them. And then it begins, it leads to paranoia. I just don't believe that church should be a do or die. I believe that if it's working for you, it's working for you. And then I don't get the conversation of do this, don't do I can't shake, I want to you can't shake anything. Like for instance, Pentecostal people are kind of ridiculous people lately because they are very judgmental. You see, church in Nigeria is just it's just a disaster lately. Redeem, we condemn Celestial. Celestial, we condemn MFN. MFN, we condemn. The fact that you are doing it this way and you're not doing it that way doesn't mean that way is right. We need to get to a point where you need to realize that the fact that I think differently from you does not make me wrong. Now your way, now my way. My own bottom line is that whatever works for you, do it. As long as now Jesus will be called. If you na broom, you won't use, call your Jesus. If na can't do, you won't bond, call your own Jesus. If you are getting results, Allah is well. Now my own be that. So there's so much divisions and perversions in the church. And at the end of the day, it's all based on lies. You know? It's all based on lies. So, but today, but today, I'm going to take a little, you know, that's why I'm saying all of this since I heard. 
there is the news about Lekia. It's not even the news. I saw it personally. Because, you know, following Lekia Deboye is somebody that regrettably I have to address his issue because I feel it's just a responsibility. If we have, if other people are misbehaving and we are talking about it. So I would say because, because listen, I'm, I'm not just a redeemed member. I was born in redeem. My mother and a couple of other individuals were those who went to a start to redeem in the United States. Started in Abekuta. Like I was born in redeem. That redemption camp that looked like a mega city now. It used to be a whole city of termites. A whole city of termites. And we were there like in a we until I came to America, we go to redeem camp every month. And at least twice in a year, we'll be there for two straight weeks. When they used to have anybody that has been in Redeem for a while, the convention used to be two weeks. They have group A and group B. Group A is one week, group B is one week. And my mother will have been there two weeks before that. So literally the entire month of August, we are in the redemption camp. I was born there. I go to Bomi Adebo's house every so I'm redeemed, redeemed, redeemed. Half of my what do you mean by half? Now the of my family are redeemed members. 50% out of those are redeemed pastors. I've done everything in redeem. Work as in training, school of disciples, this, that. Boy, joke inject any came my mother. I'm sick and tired of looking at the boy. And this is this is this is this is becoming unbecoming. I'm sorry to say Lake is becoming a nuisance complete nuisance and it's a shame and it's highly disturbing i am not happy at all but you see i am i am more angry oh okay image is here that's only judge we're born to know i am more angry as much as i'm pissed off with Licky, i'm more pissed off with the board of Trustee of the Redemption of Life, Board of Governing Council, the Iron Shade. I'm going to let some image on my way because they might afford the millennium. Check out for going to go for them. How many of you did literature in secondary school and you were privileged to read a book called Animal Farm? Animal Farm, the story of Snowball and Napoleon. It's too much nepotism in Redeem, and I hate that. Remember Animal Farm, where uh, old old uh, old major made a law, you know, when he was guarding all the other animals. And then old major made a law and says all animals are equal. Yeah, when old major died, Napoleon. Of course, we arranged the law, and he said all animals are equal, but some anim animals are more equal than the other. What well, I came with in some English, Ewo, the dividend of God is my biggest fear right now. May God give Pastor Inokadeja a long life. He's 80 years old now. May God lengthen his life. May God give him long life and give him good health to enjoy it but you know the honest truth you have less time to spend than the years he has spent i don't you can never live up to 160. god give him long life but the reality is I was in love. And he knows that. Can you shake me? His days are, he's counting his years. He will live long, but he can't live as long as he has lived. Mm -mm. So, if Adeboye live long, 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 and back up now and go to meet the Lord, what will happen in Redeem? Eh? She bang on no more, but she ain't condemn my mother to just not condemn Musele. Go to my shell and redeem. Go to my shell and redeem. 
o ma wo siju ija won leadership se le lo se le nle ni na ti ba won se le para won ja won ma gbe ke 47 wa ribi mo as yo ma awon senior pastors awon age o won ma ya ke sira won gba sa si wa church because you see we cannot close our eyes to the irregularities that is going on let me address lake first and then i come to the, this board ah or let me give you a little bit of background into the framework of Redeemed Christian of God. Redeemed Christian of God was founded by a, a man who is not lettered called Pa Akindayomi. This man used to be a, a prophet in CNS Church, a manager from Keruba and Serafu. That's why it bothers me when Redeemer condemn me white garment and I'll be like, Shake Badu. And to that Redeemer, like, can she white garment? Little one. Now, he started this church, but the man is not lettered. In his time, the church already grew and they have a couple of parishes. And as at the time where he was to die, as at the time where Padre Yomi was to die, he handed over the leadership of the ministry to Pastor E. Adeboye. He handed over to a Pastor Adeboye, which as I then, Pastor Adeboye was just like fresh. It's relatively new. There are other senior pastors there. All the Pastor Ilori, Pastor Akindele, Pastor Abiono, those are, they were already pastors there. They were, you know, they were senior pastors who are the associates of Baba Kindayomi. But he handed over to this young new guy that just joined the church. That you know, it's just you know, he has just getting committed to the church. I mean, on the surface, they will say it's God that asked him to hand over to him, but it's just common sense. All of these Baba Baba that are other associate pastors, they are really not lettered. They don't have this. Is a man who has joined the church almost at the way is the only educated person as a day in the kingdom of God. It's just common sense to feel like, oh, this is going to be... The man just had a foresight. He said, God told him that the church would be... Everything that happened in Redeem today, Baba Kedayomi prophesied it, he said it before he died. Now, he handed over this church to this man, who is as a then already uh, a university lecturer. Done well for himself. Had his first degree, had his master's degree. I think he already even had his PhD. And for me, I think that's just logic. So he took over the mantle of the church and he started running with the vision, with the template that was already made. And that was how everything grew, grew, grew. And then they bought the land at Lagos Ibadan Expressway a little bit large portion of land and they begin to you know acquire the other properties that what you can see today at some point in the ministry there was shortage of funds to fund the project that they were doing